So I've been trying to think of a way that we could talk about Appalachian language more. You know, I've done a few videos about funny sayings and deep sayings and different words, but then I kept thinking about it on my blog, Blind Pig and the Acorn. I have a monthly test, Appalachian vocabulary test, so that's a way to talk about it. And of course, I share other posts. But then I got the idea that maybe I should just get the dictionary of course, it has to be a dictionary with Appalachian words in it and go through it and talk about each word as we come to it. So that's what I'm going to do today. I've got the Dictionary of Smoky Mountain English. It was uh, created by Michael Montgomery and Joseph Hall. Actually, Michael Montgomery done most of the work, but Joseph Hall was such a part of it. His research was such a part of it. He's listed too. And it was published by the University of Tennessee in... Uh, 2004. It's a really hard book to find and if you find it, it's very, very expensive. I've had mine for since I started the Blind Pig and the Acorn, so since I guess 2008, Miss Cindy bought it for me and even then she she paid a pretty penny for it. Miss Cindy's my mother-in-law, That's uh, for those of you who don't know, so it was a gift from her. They are publishing a new dictionary of Smoky Mountain English. It's expected to be out sometime next spring. So I'm anxiously awaiting that, and I hope that it'll, at least when it first publishes, that it won't be as expensive. Some of these you can find online go for $1,000 now, which is just kind of hard for most people to do. You know, of course, it is a $1,000 book, a $1,000 dictionary, but it is priceless in one way because the dictionary, the way it's laid out, of course, it's got all words, but it has so many references and so many... Um, little tidbits about each word that you'll find. It also has a, um, a great grammar part of it in the front, so it goes over a lot of the grammar that's used in, in the Smoky Mountains, but Smoky Mountains is in Appalachia, so a lot of the things that's talked about in it go throughout the, the whole Appalachian range, or is commonly found instead of just in the Smoky Mountains that it's the title of the dictionary. Anyway, so today I'll go, I'm gonna skip over to the, there's also some great photos in the beginning of the book that are actually photos of some of the people um, that Joseph Hall interviewed. So some of the research that it that ended up in the dictionary, uh, you can also see some of the people in the front of it. I'm going to skip over to the A's. We'll just start at the very beginning. So the, the very first word in the dictionary is funny. It's A. So it's an indefinite article. So in place of an A, and we use it in place of an and before a vowel sound. So here's some, I, I won't go through all of them, but here's just some uh, examples. We'll see if any of them are still familiar today. So 1789, Big Pigeon Minutes, that was the book that they quoted from. Whereas the times looking very difficult in respect of the Indians being so troublesome and in the case the church should be dissolved under such an unhappy circumstance, the church doth hereby empower Abram McKay as clerk of said church to give any order member as dissolved a letter of dismension in behalf of said church. Wow, that was a, a really crazy one for me to pick, the very first one of the dictionary. Let's see if we can... Um, Here's another one. Uh, grandfather, this is 1937 from the Hall Collection. So this is something he recorded someone saying. Grandfather came here on an ox wagon. Anyway, so that's the first one. Let's um, go to the next one. The next one, A is like, it goes all through these. It has like a, we're gonna skip over A. It's so complicated. Okay, let's go back, a back of. So that's a preposition that means behind. Same as back of, but we say a back of. So I might say um, the chicken coop is a back of the house. That's one way. So here's an example from the Hall Collection, 1939, Deep Creek, North Carolina. They was out of hearing, uh, going just out, just a back of round top, just out of hearing, going out just a back of round top. So a back, a back of, a bed, you might think. That was pretty obvious. If you're a bed, you're in the bed. So here's one, 1936, Swain County, North Carolina. Um, that was, it was recorded as being used there. Here's a sentence from Paris, 1955, Roaming the Mountains. Here I was a bed and could hardly move, but he said he would carry me. So if you were a bed, you were in the bed. I've never heard anyone say that one. So that one's definitely fallen out of fashion. Abide, that's a great one. That's just a good word altogether if you abide. It's such a strong word if you abide in something. But um, So to endure, to bear with patience, to tolerate, to endure. And so 1974, Fink, bits of mountain speech, tolerate, endure. And then the example is, I can't abide them kind. 
abide. That's a great word. Okay. Uh, a body. It just says see body, so we'll have to wait on that one. A boon. I've never heard that one. A boon is a preposition. It means above. So I've never heard that one. A boon. Please let me know any of these words, whether you've heard them or if you know about them or anything you want to say about them. Um, let's go. A cause means because. I don't, I don't know if I've ever heard anyone say a cause. Maybe. Um, account. No account. That's really familiar. Really common. Uh, account is worth value is the way we use it. I have a daughter, Kate, Katie or Chitter on the blog if you know her from that way and she says that a lot. She uses account like that. It's not no account or it's not any account. She uses account like that a lot but that's just account means value to us. It's like a way of saying value. Acid wood, that's one you don't hear much unless you're around logging or paper mills or something like that. Bark rich and tannic acid that is harvested from chestnut, oak, and other trees and sold for use in finishing leather goods. So it could be in the leather tanning process also, I guess, but also you'll hear that in, uh, like, I guess, paper mills. Uh, a cross, this is a good one. We put a T on it, so a crossed. It's funny that T shows up like in once, a crossed. There's a bunch of them. Of course, I can't think of all of them now. But that's one that's, even if I hear someone talking, because I'm always listening for stuff, even if it's someone that doesn't really have an Appalachian accent at all or even a Southern accent, sometimes I'll hear that T at the end of their words, uh, and I'll be surprised, but also know that someone influenced them to add that T. I don't think that I add T's to mine. Another common one is we add D's to it sometimes, like gowned. Instead of just saying gown, put your gown on, put your gowned on, put a D on it. It's crazy. Okay, across the waters, that's just a prepositional phrase over the ocean used by older people in the 1930s in identifying their ancestors' origin. You might, um, I still hear people say kind of like across the pond or over the pond or something, but across the waters, that's a neat one. Um, act the fool, if you act the fool, it means that you're acting and playing up, playing like a clown or being foolish or whatever. The one sentence from that one, 1937, Hall Collection, Cosby, Tennessee. I was just acting the fool. That was Leela Ramsey had said that. Adam and Eve is a noun. It's a perennial orchid formerly used in conjuring to make a love potion. Wow, I've never, I don't know what an Adam and Eve is. I'd like to know, though. Um, the quote from that one is 1901, Lunzenberry, Southern Wildflowers. Another curious point is that when the plant is uprooted, there are found to be, as in a chain, several old corms attached in succession to the one of the present season. It was perhaps a young plant which had borne but two which suggest to don the donor its popular name, Adam and Eve, hand in hand. I don't know what that plant is, but I'd like to know. Um, there's another kind of a saying or whatever, Adam's fool or Adam's house cat, Adam's off ox. That's um, a noun and it's a person who cannot name or recognize. So here's an example, uh, 1931 Combs. I didn't know him from Adam's off ox. Now I hear my whole life I've heard people say I don't know him from all Adam, just that part. So maybe over the years the Adam's house cat, Adam's off ox and fool got um, just left by the wayside. I have heard people say I don't know him from Adam's house cat, that one. But anyway, if you hear someone say I don't know him from Adam or I don't know her from Adam, it just means I don't know who they are. I never knew them. Adam's needle, that's a yucca plant. Those grow wild, even in my area they do. Miss Cindy has some in her yard. Um, adder's tongue, that's a flowering wild plant. Same as dog tooth violet, fawn lily, lamb's tongue, and trout lily. Addle, if you addle someone, that's today's, hence addled. So if, you get com if you're addled, you're like confused or kind of weak or just don't know what's going on. So here's a good one from there, 1939, the Hall Collection, Mount Sterling, North Carolina. I got back over there and found the shots had went off and killed six men, found two a laying down the road. The other boys were crawling around there addled. It took us something like two or three hours to get them all gathered up or practically all evening. Matt Caldwell is who was being interviewed at that time. So I wonder what happened. It must have been some kind of explosion. 
addle off. If you addle off, it means you stagger or limp away as in a dazed manner. I don't think I've heard that one either. I've heard this one, addle padded. Uh, it just means the same thing as addled, like the kind of off in the head or something like that. Afeard. Uh, I've heard people say afeard. I'm afeard of that or afeard of this. It just means afraid. They're afraid. Affected is used sometimes for infected. If, if you're affected, I don't think I've ever heard anyone use that, but it just means infected. So they must have said something. Well, let's see what they said. <clears throat> his hand got affected. So instead of saying like his hand got infected. A four means before. So that's another one where they're using the A. Let's see. Now the way the thing happened was this, and I reckon you never heard such like a four. So that was in 1849, Lanham, Allegheny Mountains. That was pretty interesting. Afterin, they put a, an R and an E-N. I mean, an E-N after the R. I've never heard anyone say that one, Afterin. He never gave me his check before, just what was left over after and he had been out with the boys. And this time there weren't no money left over. And that was from 1989 Smith Flying Bullets. Afterwards, different variant forms, uh, adders, uh, adderwards. I've heard people say that. They kind of use the T instead of for the after part, adder, adderwall, that kind of thing. A geep. That's one that's like a call to pig, same as geep or goop. I've never had pig, so I never heard that. Seems like my papa would just say pig, pig, pig when he wanted the pigs. But he did have a unique, and other coon hunters here too, way of calling their coon dogs. Um, I can't do it. It's like yee-haw, hee-haw, 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 or something like that. Anyway, there's all sorts of uh, different ways of how people, examples of how people called their animals to come eat is what they were doing, calling them, or calling them maybe for the hunting dogs to go hunt. But, um, and then there's even, it's interesting sometimes at fair and, and festivals and that kind of thing, there will be a hog calling contest or those kind of calling contests so that they, and then they, whoever does the best hog call or sheep call or whatever it is, they win a prize. So that's interesting. Aggravateness, that's a good one. We just put an EST. We put an EST on a lot of our words. So the aggravateness, so I could say, um, sometimes um, he was the aggravatingest boy I ever seen. He was always pulling my hair and pushing my books out of the seat. And the boy I rode the bus with was the most aggravatingest boy I ever seen in my life. So that's a way to use aggravatingest. Agonies, that's a good one. Um, it says it's sickness or ailment. Mary hadn't been doing her work since she's been suffering with the agonies. Agonies. Maybe that's like agony. Agony, agonies, I guess. That was Garber Mountainese, 1976. A hold. You'll hear a lot of people still say that one. Take a hold of that right there. We put an A before hold. Sometimes you hear the T on the end of the hold, too. Holt. So, let's see. 1932, Dargan, call home. I can't get a hold of her. 1940, honk. Han, Hank's done. I took a hold of his neck and watched his foot. Uh, 1962, Dykeman, tall woman. Our troops got to keep a halt of it till the Rebs surrender, ma'am. Anyway, those are some examples of a halt. If you aim to do something, that means you plan to do something. Uh, you have pur purpose, you have purpose, you're intending. So I aim to do that. So I aim to talk more about Appalachian language on this channel. I don't know if this video was a good example of that or not, but you can tell me that in the comments. Anyway, next time, if it is, we'll start back with the A's and we'll continue on from where we left off today. But I hope you enjoyed this. hope you'll leave a comment about the words and the ones like me you've never even heard of or the ones you're really familiar with. Mostly, I just hope you'll drop back by often as I celebrate Appalachia, and that includes a large part of it is celebrating the wonderful Appalachian language.